Well, they're big fish and they're, they're prehistoric. And people like looking at big fish and every one is bigger than the next, it seems. I like to watch them, it's, it's different. Because they're so close and they're right at your feet, you can reach out and touch them. There's no place else that you can really go and see fish in this abundance. They're really cool looking. The actual history of the fish is pretty incredible in itself. These fish will literally come right onto the rocks and begin twisting and turning and spawning and it, it's really quite a show. It's really something to see. Luke, look at her. Look at, look at, look at her. Look down in the water. Look at the fishies in the water. <laughs> Just because how old they get and stuff like that. I like, the I like life to watch cycle. when they I like to watch them when they like fight sometimes. Everybody says they're ugly, but uh, I think they're beautiful. First of all, it's prehistoric, and so it's only like a million years old. It doesn't have any scales like regular fish. It's got cartilage like a shark. The females don't even come up to spawn until they're 25 or 30 years old. The big ones are the females, the small ones are the males. And our state has done a good job in terms of preserving them and putting in the riprap and giving them spots to lay their eggs. Just the sturgeon themselves in terms of their numbers, it's always unbelievable to see 16 to 20 fish in one pod all rolling and pushing and flipping, you know, each other. And so that's a pretty phenomenal sight to think that you're only three feet away from being able to witness that. It's one of the better parts of Wisconsin in my mind. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Let's check it in here. Hello. Hi there. Ready to roll? Ready to go. Okay, you guys are done? She has. All right. You guys are ready to roll? Here's a couple of hats. Here's this year's hats. It's, it's a very precious resource, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it's only a few places in the world where they're they congregate like this. Volunteer with the sturgeon guard here. Uh -huh. oh, this is incredible. I've seen pictures of sturgeon. My father uh, speared, never got one, but speared up on Lake Winnebago. Just make sure that there's something there for our grandchildren. That's why we volunteered for this, you know. I guess it's an experience. I mean, uh, something that uh, we've never seen before. By doing the patrol, kind of helping the uh, fishery out by keeping the poachers from taking our fish that we would spear the following year. We're probably just babysitting and it's to prevent uh, some poaching. They've had some serious poaching in some areas. Prehistoric fish is one of the ugliest fishes that you'll see. And, and in fact, we wanted to earn that hat. <laughs> and it says sturgeon. Sturgeon guard. So it's just, I guess, my love of the outdoors. And, you know, you're looking at a prehistoric uh, fish here. Yeah, the change in the number of people that come out to look at fish has been dramatic in the last 10 years, I would say. 10 to 15 years. And part of that is because they've actually built these sites specifically to make it easier for people to see fish. You talk to somebody that says you can go up there and see a seven foot fish, you know, up to 200 pounds right there and a half of six inches of water. And you just normally never get to see a sturgeon unless you're a spearer. It's just the fact that you get to see it and it's such a unique deal, especially for children too. People love bringing kids up here and letting them see it and that kind of thing. And it's the largest fishery like this as you know in North America. You know, the, what we have here today is it's taken us a long time to build up to what we have here and there's a lot of people and organizations that are responsible for what we have today. It's not just one person or just one organization. 
We've had biologists working on intensely on lake sturgeon management for almost 60 years now. And prior to that, uh, we had we had management activities going back all the way to 1903. And so it's the, the management that's taken place, it's the enforcement that's taken place over the years, and then it's also the people, the organization. People are so drawn to the fish like we just discussed. Groups like Sturgeon for Tomorrow and Shadows on the Wolf that uh, raise hundreds of thousands of dollars that go into yeah. building spawning sites like this site right here and uh, and fund the protection program with the sturgeon guards and all those things combined uh, produce the management program that we have and that's, that's what's produced the success that we have. It was a great day um, on the river and a great day of uh, sighting fish watching and um, a good feeling, like Gary said. I want to be. Just put the tarp down here, Haney. Yeah. The female is empty. Sixty-three-eight. Uh -oh. She's good down here. Davey needs way down the road. Good down this end. Uh, 77, 8. Ooh. And 100 pounds plus. Boy, that fish is, that fish is 140, 170 at least. Come here. Not sixty two three. Here we go. 